I ask that we adjourn in memory today for Fred Ross Jr., a legendary organizer for social justice. For more than half a century, Fred Ross Jr. was a champion for working people, working alongside Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers, and helping elect the most consequential House Speaker in our nation's history, Nancy Pelosi. My constituent, Fred Ross Jr., died of cancer November 20th at his home in Berkeley just weeks after receiving tributes from hundreds of friends and colleagues for his 75th birthday. Former U.S. Labor Secretary Robert Reich told Fred, your boldness and vision have been a source of inspiration to me and many other people working for social justice, labor unions, and the hopes and dreams of so many people for a better life. Fred began his work as a full-time organizer for the farm workers at age 23 during the historic 1970 salad bowl strike in Salinas. It was his father, Fred Ross Sr., who introduced then 25-year-old Cesar Chavez to the power of organizing. In early 1975, Fred Ross Jr. conceived of and organized a 110-mile march against Gallo Wines that began in San Francisco's Union Square and ended with at least 15,000 farm workers and supporters at Gallo's headquarters in Modesto. I have a framed photo on my wall at home of then Congressman Ron Dellums, of the first African-American Alameda County Supervisor John George, Cesar Chavez, Fred Jr., and many others who were on that march. One of the motives for the Gallo March was to put pressure on then Governor Brown to push through the Agriculture Labor Relations Act, the first law of its kind in the nation. But the impact of Fred's work went well beyond labor organizing. He also played pivotal roles in pressuring Congress to change policies towards oppressive governments in Central America and accelerating the naturalization of immigrants in the U.S. And in 1987, Fred worked to elect Nancy Pelosi to Congress in a special election. And after learning of Fred's passing, Pelosi said, without his early support and his brilliant leadership organizing the ground operation of my first campaign, I would never have become a member of Congress. A hallmark of Fred Jr.'s approach in terms of his organizing of volunteers and his, his running campaigns was his savvy use of the media to put pressure. It was also building one-on-one -on -one relationships to exercise what he called collective power. Fred's mother, Frances Ross, was an original Rosie the Riveter. She was a shop steward in a World War II plant in Cleveland who helped work to help Jewish doctors immigrate from Nazi Germany. And shortly before he died, Fred said in a speech for an award he received from the National Center for Race Amity, fighting and organizing for racial and economic justice is in my DNA. Now, Fred Ross did not, uh, uh, he encountered much, uh, as you would imagine, being the organizer that he was for so many years. He recalled being knocked unconscious by a grape grower during a farm worker election, being shot at by a security guard at a supermarket, and he quipped, luckily, the guy was a bad shot. Um, and in John Lewis's tradition of good trouble, he said he was arrested some 39 times, mostly for good causes. Um, recently, Fred was working on a documentary film about his father that underscored the critical role of organizing. And the United Farm Workers said in a tribute, as with his father, Fred Jr.'s labors were never about himself. He was always about empowering others to believe they were responsible for the progress that they won. Fred Jr.'s nature was ceaselessly positive. He always thought things could get done. He is survived by his wife, Margot Feinberg, who is here with us on the floor who is a prominent labor attorney, their two children, Charlie and Helen Ross, and his brother, Robert Ross, and his sister, Julia Ross. 